To understand the profound connection between electromagnetic theory and relativity, we need to study relativity a little bit more. We're going to pick up from where we left off last time with the Lorentz transformation, which we did derive, and introduce here Lorentz contraction and time dilation. Here you have the K prime frame moving to the right at speed V, and here is a laboratory frame, which we can be in. And we're going to look at a rod in this frame and a clock in this frame. And this is how the coordinates are related. So let's start out with the rod. If we put the rod in the moving frame, then the rod as measured where the rod is at rest is by definition its proper length, which we designate by L sub zero. Now, I'm going to look at that from the laboratory frame zipping by and to make a measurement so that I get a value of the L, I'm going to nail the beginning and at the end at the same time. So I want delta T, my delta T to be zero. And when my delta T is zero, we'll have it. My delta X will be the length here. Delta X prime is the length as measured in the prime frame. And this is how the deltas are related. So letting delta T be equal to zero, we have delta X prime, which is the L sub zero, and delta X, which is the laboratory measurement L, and divided by this square root, the delta T is zero. So this means that we measure in the laboratory frame, watching the L naught zip by, we measure a contraction. That's called the Lorentz contraction. For time dilation, we put the clock in this frame, and that clock will have T naught as measured in the prime frame, and we're going to watch that and see what we get over in the lab frame. So what we are doing here is putting a clock in the prime frame, so its, it's clock doesn't move with respect to that moving frame. It's going to be delta x prime is zero, and delta t prime in its k prime frame, that's the proper time in a clock as it ticks away, and then in the laboratory frame as we measure it zip by, this will be the time t that we measure delta t. So I want an equation that has delta t, delta t prime, and delta x prime. And I'm not going to get that here. See, I want two primes and one delta t. Here I always have one prime and two regulars when I take the deltas. Not good. So to do that, we want the inverse transformation because the inverse transformation will have two primes on the right side and only one no prime on the left side. So how do we do that? The inverse transformation, you can do it two ways. You can do it the long way or the short way. The long way is to solve these two equations with two unknowns, x and t, solve for x and t, and you get this. But that's algebra. If you want to swap these two, prime and unprime, just think of it this way. Jump into the x prime frame. And if you do that, you watch the laboratory frame move the other way. So v goes to minus v, and you do the swap with the primes, and you're finished. And that's the shortcut. So let v go to minus v, and swap primes and unprime, and you're finished. You're putting yourself in the moving frame, watching the laboratory frame move in the minus v direction. So now we have what we're looking for. We're looking for an equation that has a delta x prime, a delta t prime, and a delta t. Here it is. Then we set delta x prime to be zero since the clock is not going to move with respect to itself in the prime frame. And this is delta t prime is the proper time of the clock since that's the frame it's in. And what we measure in the laboratory frame is a time stretch, a time dilation. So this is our summary. We call this a contraction because since we can't go the speed of light, V will be less than C, which means this will subtract a little bit away from the 1, which means this will be less than L0 over on here. And since we're dividing by something less than 1, this will be bigger over here. So Lorentz contraction and time dilation, special relativity.